We just give them a real heartfelt welcome this morning. God bless you. We love you. We're here for you. Peace to your house. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Well, let me share a couple of things before we dive into our new series uh, today. Um, these are not announcements, okay? And I want to emphasize this. These are intentional things that we all do as a part of our Christian life to make this work. How many of you know it's a walk with God? Amen. Well, for the rest of you, it's a walk with God. And there's steps that you take. And uh, so I just want to remind you of some of these very, very important steps. First of all would be our giving. It's our stewardship. Everything you and I have comes from God. And Jesus made clear to us, Second Chronicles made it clear to us, the Proverbs made it clear to us that when we put him first, he will help you with the rest. And we certainly need his help with the rest. Amen. And it honors the Lord. It honors the Lord when we do that. He said in his word, if you honor me, I will honor you. But if you treat me lightly, I'm going to treat you lightly. And I can't afford that, y'all. I can't. I need, I need the full honor and help of God in my life. How about you? So don't forget your giving. Y'all have been so generous. And uh, even during all of COVID and everything else, thank you for that. But it's not just for the church. It is for you. It is for you that you have the blessing of God uh, on your finances. And remember this, you can never outgive God. Secondly would be growth track. Everybody say growth track. Who is it that we want to go through growth track? Everybody, but yet not everybody has gone, but we want to encourage you to do that. It's during this service, so maybe catch it next week or the next week. And um, it's, it's kind of the hub, so you can kind of find your way into the family, find your way on the team. And uh, just a real important thing, we're very intentional about it, and we believe it is uh, that's why we do it. It's going to help you. It's going to help the church as well. And then thirdly would be uh, groups. Everybody say groups. It's important that you get uh, in a group. It's a little closer setting. Some powerful things happen in a group that can't happen in any other uh, setting. So I'd encourage you to do that. We're going to talk about groups just a little bit um, as we go on today too. So. Um, you're probably wondering what my t-shirt says. There you go. You mean guy be both, okay? And we're going to talk about that. And I bought it just for th this morning. <laughs> and I wanted to be comfortable. And my ACDC shirt was still in the laundry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one. I've, I've never had one, so... Hey, and uh, I just want to say a quick thank you to, I had a birthday this past week, and I got so many comments from y'all. Thank you. I just felt really, really loved. So. Well, we're, a series, we believe that a series is a season. We believe it is a season that God is saying something to us as a church, as a church family. We just finished a series. Do you remember what that was called? Done with dysfunction. Did that help anybody at all? I pray so. And all of that is available, eight weeks worth. That's available, um, archived in a number of different ways. You can go back and watch or listen. We are going to be working on uh, some kind of booklet or ebook to go along with that just to get those principles out uh, so that we can be done and stay done with this function in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, this series is called Summer of Serving. Go ahead and say that with me. Summer of serving and our, our team has done a wonderful job of uh, keeping that in front of you in a number of different ways and summertime and serving you know, could seem like busy work yeah i remember loving when school was out for the summer and yet hating it at the same time because then i had to mow the lawn had to do all the stuff y'all with me you had to you had to do all those things you know so but serving is not uh, busy work. Serving is actually a core value and a main activity of the kingdom of God. I don't think you heard me. Serving is a core value. It's a main activity of the kingdom of God. And let's go right into scripture here, Matthew chapter 20. The Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and, give his, and to give his life a ransom for many. Look in John 13. If I then, your Lord and, Jesus, and teacher, Jesus is saying this, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. And so Jesus is also known in the, in the Gospels as 
the servant with a capital S. It is one of the titles of the Lord. Um, we serve God. We serve God by serving people. Do you hear that? We serve God by serving people. And Jesus came, as we saw in Scripture, not just to, he, he didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. We as his children, we as his servants, his followers, we're also called to serve. Now get this, everything that Jesus did on our behalf, everything that Jesus did on our behalf was the manifestation of God's love and kindness toward us. I wanna say that again, everything that Jesus did on our behalf was the kindness and love of God the Father on our behalf. Any believers here today? Okay, 16, 17, so. Okay, if you're a believer, if you're following Jesus, you know, you know that God is loving and kind. Does anybody here know that God is loving and kind? Now there's a lot of religious people that are angry and I don't think they see God as loving and kind, they see him as a mean, angry judge. They've got a wrong concept completely of, of God and the, the word of God would help you to straighten all of that out. But we know as sons and daughters of God, we know that he is loving and kind. But look at me for this. But so many people out there don't know that he's loving and kind. So God has called us in all of the roles that you serve and all the places that you go, all the things that you do in your life, God has called us to, to reflect him He's called us to represent him. And here's the thing. People need to find out that God is loving and kind. And that's our job. So that the people around us could find out that God is loving and kind, we should be, come on, loving and kind. And, and I wanna make sure that we get that, okay? Because this is summer school for us, okay? Our job is to show those around us that God is loving and kind by being loving and kind. Can I get a good amen today? Amen. Well, our team has put together uh, some collateral, and if you bring up that uh, slide for summer of serving, we also have rack cards that are out there for you to tell you what all we're doing. We have six weeks of teaching on this, and if you go to our website, nbcocala.com forward slash serve, don't go there right now because we're doing this right now, but go there later, and then the rack cards will tell you what we're doing. And we have about 26 big projects during the month of June. We have a whole bunch of smaller projects with, within groups. And then we want everybody, everybody say, that's me. We want everybody every day to do some act of kindness. What are you all sung out? You can't talk now? <laughs> every day, everyone do some some little acts of kindness. Yeah, now it's catching on. And we have uh, on here even a list of um, some ideas that would kind of prompt you some things that you could do um, regarding acts of service, let you know the other things that were going on. One of our uh, ministry partners, and we're helping a bunch of ministry partners this month as well, one of our ministry partners is the uh, Women's Pregnancy Center. And uh, they are with us today, they have a, a a display set up out in the main hallway there and uh, we believe in life now I'm not letting you go on this one we believe in life yeah. we believe in life we believe that every child comes from God we believe that life begins at conception and uh, you know there's always been with with baby Moses with baby Jesus there's always been this move to kill off deliverers and that's part of it. And, and for that to be in our culture is just shocking and hurtful. And so they do an incredible job of helping uh, women that have an unwanted or unplanned pregnancy to kind of guide them through that in a very life-giving way. So stop by, see them, wave at them, cheer them on, uh, send them some money, help them out, do something, um, because we appreciate what they're doing and we're gonna be helping them this month do, uh, do some projects as well, amen. Well, let's go to 1 John chapter four. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So let me put it all together real quick. God is love. Love is of God. 1 Corinthians 13 says, and love is 
kind. So I think it all comes around to this. And if, if we're going to be, you know, one of the major ways that we're going to show people, show people that God is loving and kind is through serving. It's through serving. And that's what we're going to be doing all summer. And you're going to see a, a greater depth on this today. Um, so God is God. He's a father. He has a family. He has sons and daughters. And if you're a son and daughter, we should be the most loving and kind people on the planet. Okay? I'm going to say it all again because summer school, got to make sure you get this, okay? God is God. God is Father. God has a family. God has children. We're His children. And God is love. Love is of God. Love is kind. And so therefore, we should be, we should be the most loving and kind people on this planet. But we have some confusion over just who it is that we're to be loving and kind toward. We exempt ourselves a lot. The media doesn't help us. Um, There are lines being drawn that God did not line, uh, God did not draw. And so there's confusion over just who we're to be loving and kind towards. So we know that we're to be in the family of God. I mean, know we're to be loving and kind to one another. All right, I'll spend a moment here. We are to be loving and kind toward one another. Every time you come here, every time you come here, every time you're involved in anything, let's make sure that we are loving and kind. You may go to lunch or a store today and see somebody from another church. You're to be loving and kind to them. You're you're to be praying that God will move big time in their church. I'm believing God to raise the spiritual water level of Marion County so that all boats rise. All boats rise. Amen. Look in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, and the message says, Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance... Let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. So first of all, we're to take care of one another. See, if you're in family, you take care of family. There's a sound delay, but it's coming to you. (laughs) We're to take care of family. We're to cheer one another on. We're to pray for one another. We're to encourage one another. We're to help meet needs in your life. We're to rejoice when you rejoice. We're to weep when you weep. We're to be strength and help for one another. Amen. Amen. Let's go a little further. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say love your enemy. So let me just stop just for a moment. We'll finish this passage. But this is something that will be a key to peace in your life. We have so much news, we have so much information coming our way, we have social media, we have all those things coming our way. And so, as Jesus said, you have heard, how many of you know you hear a lot of things? And I'll probably say this later too, we're living in a bully culture. And so, well, you need to do it the way we say. So you 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 have heard what the world says. And see, if you live only by that, you're gonna lose your peace. You're gonna lose direction. But Jesus says, this is what they say, this is what uh, you've heard, but this is what I'm telling you. So whenever you see something on the news that upsets you, that's what they say, you need to find out also what he said, and that's your path back to peace. Now notice this, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute, persecute you. Go ahead. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. You know, if I were God, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably withhold some sun, and I'd withhold some rain. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Okay. And God is good. He is good even to the unjust and the just. Go ahead. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, 
even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, we can, in one sense of the word, never be perfect like our Heavenly Father. But this actually ties into the series we just finished on Done With Dysfunction. This actually has to do, you are to be perfect, it's, it's that you're to be fully developed. It's that you're to be fruit-bearing. It's that you're making progress and you're, and you're growing. And uh, to grow up, as Colossians says, into the image of Christ, which is truly, truly perfection. So you've got what you've heard and you've got what Jesus tells us. And he says, and when we do what he tells us to do, then we're acting like true children of God. So we've got a spectrum, okay? We've got, we've got love your neighbor. Come on, everybody say love your neighbor. love your neighbor. And Jesus said, and I want you to love your, I want you to love your enemies too. One place where the word enemy is used, it means uh, actively hostile. So that means people actually working against you as an enemy. So if God wants us to love one another, and he wants us to love those that might even be working against us, guess who else he wants us to love? Everybody in between. Come on, y'all. Everybody in between. And we've got to stop trying to find contingencies or exceptions well, I know Jesus said that, and I know Pastor preached that, but that's not real. No, that really is it. Jesus' words are very, very plain for us, everyone in between. Here's the good news. We only have to love the people that God loves. <laughs> Write that down. Now, look with me at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. He goes on, he says, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then you will reward, your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Look at it in the message paraphrase. Our father is kind, you be kind. So let me back up. You and I know that God is loving and kind. There's so many people around us that do not know that God is loving and kind. And God has asked us, actually he's commanded us to go and to be loving and kind to everybody, one another, enemies, and everybody in between so that they can find out that God is loving and kind. Now, in Acts chapter 28, the apostle Paul is arrested for preaching the gospel. He was having quite an impact, and they're going to ship him literally on a ship to Rome. And so as they're on that ship, it's quite a journey. You can read about it in the, in the latter parts of the book of Acts. And they come up upon a storm and they shipwreck, and they shipwreck by the island of Malta. Malta is just south of Sicily. Sicily is just south of Italy. And uh, they wash up on shore. All of them lived. An angel of the Lord came to Paul and said, everybody's going to make it. They all lived. And so they're floating up on shore on boxes and on boards and everything. Can you imagine the people that lived on that shore? You know, all this coming up. And it was cold and it was rainy. And the scripture says this, that those people showed unusual kindness to them. It made the Bible, y'all. So what is unusual kindness if you've been shipwrecked? And it says, showed unusual kindness and welcomed them. The Bible says that they made them a fire and they welcomed them. I can't help but think that welcome includes food. Or says coffee or hot chocolate or something. Y'all with me? And they showed them unusual kindness because it was cold and rainy. And the Bible describes them as natives. And I just think that people, listen, made in the likeness and image of God, there's already something in us that wants to be kind to other people. Here's a quote we found a few years ago. It says this, it's hard to hate up close. It's hard to hate up close. Oh, it's easy to lob insults and fight with people on social media or hang out with your three friends and be negative about them. But you know what, when you get up close with people, it's hard to hate up close. You're made in the likeness and the image of God, the Imago Dei, and there's something that's wired, something that's placed in you that wants to be kind. And when we're kind to others, oftentimes that can be a turning point for them as well. In John chapter 15, verse 12, this is my commandment, Jesus says, that you, come on everybody. Okay, are we going to have to be, go back and do summer school reading too? <laughs> Expressive and with volume. Ready? This is my commandment that you love. There you are. As I have loved you. Boy, is that loaded. 
Secondly, in Ephesians chapter 4, watch this. Come on, read that part with me. Be kind to one another, another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So these are both commands. These are both imperatives in the New Testament language that we are to love one another and we are to be kind to one another. Remember your job? We're trying to show other people that God is loving and kind by being loving and kind. Amen. Amen. And so these are actually commands. You're not waiting until you suddenly feel like it. You know what? I feel kind of kind today. That's probably not going to happen very often. It's something that you choose to do because you obey this command of the Lord. Now, we're not supposed to, and this is what some people think their job is, to comment on everybody. You've seen the, what is it, progressive commercial or something and guys walking by with blue hair. Y'all seen that? And this guy's trying to teach them how to not become like their parents. And as we all see it, we all see it. And the guy can't hold it and he's got blue hair. So our job is not to comment on everybody. If you're like me, I have plenty of comments. Come on now, how many of y'all are fast? You could come up with stuff, all right? I mean, I got comments. That's my battle is I have to make sure that it doesn't make it all the way through and come out here, okay? It goes with the gift, I guess. Some people say, well, I thought we were supposed to comment or we're supposed to judge or we're to ignore people or we're to post about them or we're to talk about them. We're to try to correct them. We're gonna fix people. I need to go share with people all of my knowledge about this and point out their errors. That's not what we're called to do. You would think that's what we're called to do. And there's a lot of people on that train that are doing all of those things. But what we're called to do, listen, is to show those around us that God is loving and kind by being loving and kind. Can you say that with me? Y'all look like the smart crew today. And so let's say this all together. Show those around us that God is loving and kind by being loving and kind. And I've been joking that this was summer school, but I'm not joking now. Welcome to Kindness 101. I want to teach you a few basics. There's a reason why you have to take summer school. It's because we got to get up to speed on some things. And these are so simple and so powerful, and they have such great impact upon other people. So the first one would be this. Smile. Come on, everybody say it. Smile. See, if you're like me, my resting face is grumpy. I'm working on it. I really am. And sometimes Alicia go, you look mad. I go, well, I'm not. (laughs) Well, you look mad. Well, I'm mad now. (laughs) So we got to work on this. The Bible even says, lift up your countenance. So, you know, I don't have to have a big, big smile all the time, but it's, it's your face is friendly and approachable. Do you know, you've had it happen before, somebody waiting, you, waiting on you at a store or somebody you pass, and they've just got that hard stone look, you get defensive. But when somebody comes by and they soften and they smile, it's the most contagious thing in the world. A smile. Everybody smile. Don't do weird smiles. Come on now. <laughs> and, and you're going to... You're going to laugh at me, but you do it anyway. You need to practice your smile. Oh, I would never do that. Yes, you do, kissy face, Instagram. (laughs) Everybody say smile. Smile. Second would be this, greet. Greet, come on, say it. Greet Greet is just hello. Hey, how you doing? Sometimes it's just a nod of the head to acknowledge a person. Y'all hear me? To acknowledge a person. Well, I don't know that person. And you never will. <laughs> I, I saw their bumper sticker. I think they're from a different political party. <laughs> what did Jesus say about all of that? See, we have all these reasons why, but you need to greet people. Come on, you need to greet people. You're going to come in close proximity to a lot of people today. And I'll say it again. When, when you come in here, it cannot be just about you and your three friends I'll get the seats, you go get the coffees. <laughs> oh, somebody's in our seat. That is not the attitude of Meadowbrook. Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> you need to greet people. Come on, say it. Greet. My brother, 
He's a few years older than I am. He went away to college years ago. And my mom said, well, when you go away to college, you got to go to church. So he went to church the first Sunday away at college. He went to a Sunday school class, large church, went to a Sunday school class, went to service. Look at me. Not one person acknowledged him. He said, okay, I'm going to come back one more week. He came back the next week, went to the class, went to church, parking lot, lobby. Not one person acknowledged him. My brother did not go to church for about 12 more years. And so if somebody comes in, listen, everybody that comes in, they're not like, praise the Lord, I've got my whole life together. Where shall I put my tithe? I'm taking notes too. You want to hear me sing? <laughs> listen, we're broken. We're beat up. Life's tough. Some people are desperate. There's people in this, among us today, they're desperate. They're hurting. And you better be loving and kind to them. If they come into a room, it's like a party at times. You come into a room to celebrate a loving and kind God, and we're his kids, and we don't show a little bit of love and kindness to people, and we've missed it. Greet. Come on, everybody say greet. greet. Wave. Go ahead, wave. All these acts of kindness, as simple as they are, listen to me, are powerful. They're more powerful than you realize. I've got, there's a house in my neighborhood, and there's a number of people that live there, and they've lived there, I don't know, maybe three, four years. I wave at them every day, and they don't wave. <laughs> my wife's starting to get a little wave. Kids will be at the bus stop. I get out to see if there's any weird or, you know, anything on my vehicle. You know, a dead deer stuck in my grill or something, you know. I, I, but I wave, but you know what? I'm not going to stop. And even if, even if they don't reciprocate, they're going to know that tall guy sure waves a lot. <laughs> Why? Because God, we know him. He's loving and kind. I want them to know that God is loving and kind. Maybe one day we'll come and they're going through something and they go, who are you? What's going on with you? We're going through something and you seem to have some peace and joy except when you have your grumpy face. <laughs> and greeting is a huge thing. Waving is a huge thing. Words. Come on, say words. words. The other day I called a place, got put on hold. And the, and the lady, the receptionist, she goes, hold please. Not what I was hoping for. So I did, in my lightning fast mind, I started thinking of lots of things to say when she came back on the line. <laughs> Finally, she came back on the line and she's like, how can I help you today? And so I just held and I thought, I'm gonna be kind, I'm gonna be patient. It's hard sometimes, I just kind and patient. And in a few moments, and I said something, she actually giggled. And then she goes, hey, I'm sorry for the delay on the phone. And it is a madhouse here today. I said, well, you don't have to worry about me. We're getting this done. So sometimes just your words and the tone of your words can make a whole big difference. Amen. Amen. I'll sneak in another story here. I was traveling one time, going to seminary, weather issues, flight or mechanical issues, flight gets canceled, happens sometimes. Everybody rushed up to the counter pounding on the counter, I've got to get to, you know, doing all of that. And I just kind of waited and waited. I thought, I always, I'll always get to where I'm going, I always do. And so when I finally got up there, I said, hey, I'm sorry about all of that. Um, what, can, I need to make a couple calls, so what do you think? What are, my, what are my chances? And I was just very friendly. She leaned forward, turned her screen around, and said, see this gate? Go there right now. It's leaving in 15 minutes. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> Kindness. Kindness. Here we go. Help. Help. You got to help people. And you say, I can't help anybody. You can help people. You can hold a door. You can do whatever. I mean, you can help people. Sometimes you can give somebody some money. Sometimes you can hold 
you can do a whole number of things. My daughter and son-in-law moved into their first house uh, this last week in Lakeland. Alicia and I went down to kind of help them out. And so, so shortly after I got there, I had a list of things they wanted me to go to Lowe's and Home Depot and Ace Hardware. So I had the whole list and I got there and I'm sitting in my car looking at the list to make sure, you know, before I got out, kind of be familiar with it. And I noticed two ladies just roughly my age and they've got a cart and some giant box and they're coming, they let the tailgate down on a truck and they're, they're starting to try to lift it up and they're not doing it. And I'm sitting there and I thought, I could ignore them in honor of all the girls that ignored me in junior high. <laughs> but my God is loving and kind. And so I raced over there. I had to go across two, two lanes in the parking lot and help them to get it up. And they looked because I didn't say, here I am. You know, I passed your Meadowbrook Church. It's up in Ocala. <laughs> Here's the website probably heard of me no I just I just showed up and gave them a little bit of help and it's like they didn't even know I was there until it was kind of helping they will thank thank you so much guess who saw that God 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 keeps the books like that and you can always find ways to help and then here's one other one pray pray come on say it pray Yeah. You know, sometimes it seems like there's nothing you could do but it's like man they're they're a mess I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for them and sometimes you can get some interaction. Sometimes this happens with us with a server in a restaurant. And you can tell something's on their heart. We build relationships. And one of them say, would y'all be praying for me? We've had servers come and, you know, on like the ticket, your bill, to write out a whole prayer request and just drop it and run. Sometimes they'll say, are you comfortable praying here? We won't go weird on you, you know. Or we can pray for you later. And we do. Pray. I said, pray. Something happens when you pray for somebody else. And I think if we turn our direction, our attention and start praying for some other people, you might get more of your prayers answered as well. Here's the one thing you don't do. Nothing. You're going to see needs. You're going to see people. That's, it's humanity. It's the image of God all around you. You're going to pass people. You're going to come in proximity of people. You're going to see them all over the place. The one thing you don't do is nothing. Make sure that you at least smile or greet or wave. I wave every day and they don't wave. I'm, I'm going to come back and tell you when they start waving at me, okay? <laughs> your words, your tone, your help, your prayer, all of this helps. Colossians chapter 3 says that we are to put on kindness. Put on kindness. That does not mean put on like fake. It means to clothe yourself like you would put on clothes. Can I tell you something about that? You're intentional about that. You don't just wake up and there's kindness and love. It's something you have to be intentional about to gain from God and clothe yourself on a daily basis, not waiting to, well, I don't feel kind today. No, God is loving and kind today. I'm going to be loving and kind today. And God will help you clothe yourself with kindness. Now let me get to a, a real point here this morning, then we're going to wrap this up today. In our culture and in our country right now, how many of you know we, we've got some problems going on? I'm waiting for that news to get to y'all. How many of you know that in our country and in our culture today, we've got some problems? I mean, you know, God is, got, is not caught off, off guard. We've got problems. We've got division. We've got evil opportunists. We've got a social media and media that are out of control. We've got a bully culture. There's an organized effort to radicalize our culture and our children. Now, hold that thought just for a moment, and let me tell you what will help you to breathe with all that going on. Judgment. The Bible tells us real clearly everybody's going to give an account of themselves. But it also shows us that kings, leaders, 
teachers, influencers. If you have power, if you have influence, if you have authority, you're going to be held accountable for how you used it because it impacts other people. The book of James even says, for like me as a Bible teacher, it says, don't desire to be a, a teacher of the word because there's an extra judgment for those who teach. There are all kinds of influencers in our culture today and influencing people to do some crazy things opposite of maybe what God would have for them. And you just need to know God keeps the books. God keeps the books. And if you have power, if you have influence, if you're in a place of authority, do it the right way. Show kindness and love. Show wisdom. Show restraint. Live out the golden rule and be a servant leader. So with problems and division and evil, evil opportunity, uh, opportunists and all of that, this is what I realized. We can't do much about what's going on nationally. But we can do so much about what is nearby. Did you hear me? I can't do very much at all on the national scale. But I can do a whole lot. You can do a whole lot nearby. Do you know what the root word for nearby shares another word, neighbor. It just means anybody within reach of you, anybody within proximity of you, let's show them that God is loving and kind by being loving and kind. Look at the old English word for kindness. Kindness. Old English, antiquated kind of word. It's drifted a little bit in its meaning and I want to, I want to pull it back to us today because we're talking about kindness. It actually means nation, kin, or my kind. So this has to do with your race. This has to do with your family, your nation, your kind. And when we say someone my kind, you know what that means? Someone like me. So the Bible is not saying to divide all this up. Well, they're not like you. No. The kindness of God is they're all like you. Every nation, every race, every, uh, every uh, the book of Revelation says every tribe, tongue, nation, kindred, and people. That's what heaven will be, and that's what God wants here. We celebrate Meadowbrook Church, a multicultural, multi-generational church. Kindness, get this, kindness treats other people as if they're just like you. Well, they're a different color. They're just like you. I think they're a different, a different political persuasion. They're just like you. And, and Well, I think they're messed up with this, or I think they're doing that, or I heard they don't like me, or whatever it would be. Listen, kindness is going to treat other people like my kind. Everybody you see around you, guess what? They're your kind. And kindness is the result of that. You treat them like you would treat your family. May our summer of serving turn into a lifestyle and a lifetime of serving. Now hear this as I close. Everything is on the seed system. Do you hear me? Everything is on the seed system. What you sow, you reap. You're not going to reap other than what you sow. And we're living in a day where there are seeds and harvest of hate in our world. And it's a weed and it spreads very fast. But we can overcome that harvest by sowing seeds of kindness. So here's your job, and I pray that it's not just for the summer, I pray it's your lifestyle and the rest of your life, hear me. That when you go out of here today, I pray it will be on your mind that everywhere you go today, you're gonna sow seeds of kindness. Start in the parking lot. Some of you, that's gonna be a huge challenge. <laughs> you go to a restaurant, you go to a store, you go home. Sow seeds of kindness, and if you sow seeds, harvest will come. The harvest of kindness is much more hearty than the harvest of hate. And you and I have much to do with on a nearby basis, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, let's sow seeds of kindness. We've got a world around us that doesn't know that God is loving and kind. We do. We've got to show them by serving. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything at all out of this this morning? All right. <laughs>